meeting of the Politburo the, of ZANU-PF, which was uh, the second meeting of this year, and it was chaired, of course, by the leader of the party, uh, President Comrade Dr. Emerson Damzo Nangagwa. Uh, he gave a very stirring speech, which uh, uh, focused uh, on the various uh, uh, business and economic signature projects which are now emblematic of his uh, uh, Second Republic uh, under the mantra Zimbabwe is open for business. He has today, he just had a tour of a factory in, in Harare, a big milling factory, a new one, which, will pro which is in the top three or four uh, nationally. And he, this has been uh, built by Champion, uh, Champion Foods uh, local entrepreneurs who are now joining the post-colonial traditional uh, white businessmen of Zimbabwe, who have been important, who have been key players in the food sector, food processing sector of Zimbabwe to date. Uh, now we are having a new class of entrepreneurs, of, of black businessmen, Zimbabwean businessmen, of course, the, the, it is, this has nothing to do with race, it's about <laughs> business. Mm -hmm. And they have shown by opening this huge factory in Tin World called Champion Foods that uh, they can get into the food processing industry and uh, bring more affordable and diverse choice to the consumer in Zimbabwe. So the president had officiated on that. Thereafter, I came to the Politburo where he highlighted the increasing cohesiveness of Southern African countries under the banner of SADC, but uh, beyond that, you know, uh, tying themselves up with other regional players, where Africa is becoming more confident and more assertive of its position in global affairs. Uh, and the fact that Zimbabwe has been at the center of assaults by the neo-colonial powers for more than two decades is now becoming a source of great pride and inspiration to the other African countries. And the star of Zimbabwe, the star of our president, Comrade E. Dim Nangagwa, continues to rise among his peers, both in SADC, uh, but also in the fellow sub-regional organizations, as well as the African Union, and even all the way to the United Nations. There is increasing appreciation of the correctness of the policies which Zimbabwe has pursued in the Second Republic in giving Zimbabwe a resilient economy which is now taking full advantage of our bountiful resources and is exciting boardrooms not only within Zimbabwe, within the sub-region, but also across the globe. We have financial <coughs> uh, players in South Africa taking an active interest in what is going on in Zimbabwe. For the first time, you know, we have been under sanctions for two decades and our neighbors in South Africa are the best financial cadres on the continent. They've, they've betted hardly an eye on Zimbabwe hitherto. But because of what the president has done under the mantra Zimbabwe is open for business, they are seeing that Zimbabwe is going places which, no, which Africa has never been to. The steel plants, the lithium investments, you know, the, 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 the revival of agriculture, notwithstanding the El Nino, all these are beginning to make a mark in the financial cadership in Santon and in South Africa. And also the discovery of natural gas in Zimbabwe and even the prospect of petroleum. All these things under the banner that Zimbabwe is hospitable to capital uh, because of pro-business policy of President Nangagwa they are making a mark. So these were the two cornerstones of his stress, our rising diplomatic star, but also our increasing, our, our, our robust footprint 
in the regional economic uh, revival of, uh, of Africa. And uh, he highlighted the fact that uh, the emergence of a new black entrepreneur bolsters the, 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 the historical one which we have built, which, which we have, and we are now building as a united Zimbabwe. We are building a, a, a very robust economy which thrives on the collective entrepreneurial skills of the totality of the Zimbabwean uh, business class, be it historical, but also be it post-independent. This has been uh, the, well, well, the, 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 what the president focused on. He also uh, gave us a rundown of what's going on in sub-regional diplomacy. The fact that uh, we took a bold stand against the inclination of Rwanda to throw its weight around. They wrote a, a letter to the Security Council trying to pan Sadak, trying to discourage Sadak from helping the DR Congo. And uh, a statement was issued in Lusaka by the Sadak states recently, uh, putting Rwanda in its place, you know, to say that we are fellow Africans, we want peace in the region. And your nefarious ways of trying to interfere in negative manner in your neighbors territory in the DRC can no longer be countenanced. Uh, the good thing is that this position is beginning to enjoy a lot of geopolitical diplomatic favor, uh, including even a, 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 a recounting or a reassessment of the positions of the EU and America towards the DRC. Uh, the president was, uh, of course, highlighting the fact that the two most important population countries in the sub-region, South Africa and DRC, if they can come together, it means that this region's prosperity is assured because these are the major powers and they've got a lot of resources, one natural resources, but the other one is also a lot of capital and human resources and uh, the, which is garnered uh, because of its uh, uh, pre-apartheid pre position with a sizable white population which uh, tended to attract capital from Europe. So we are now harnessing all these things, and Zimbabwe is at the center of it. And the results of it are also being seen in the way Mozambique is getting excited about what is going on in Zimbabwe. Up to, uh, up to the Second Republic, Mozambique has been a backwater. Uh, we, we, without Zimbabwe's economic hinterland, Mozambique's prospects, particularly the ports of Baira and Maputo, they were not so uh, uh, tantalizing. But now, because of what's happening in Zimbabwe in the steel sector and the lithium sector, what's happening in Zimbabwe even with the, in the energy sector, also in Mozambique itself is creating this pro prospect of the two countries managing their affair affairs uh, through a binational commission, which will make sure that we offer a, 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 a joint package to investment, because investment is very important to open up uh, the, 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 the economic prospects of the two countries. So this was a, 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 a one aspect of the president's address. He also was very thankful of uh, the donation from Russia. You know, we had a huge donation of wheat from Russia, but also a huge, huge donation of, of fertilizer. It's common cause that Russia is the third largest producer of trader, the third largest trader of grain in the whole world. And they do have a, you know, a, a, a sizable uh, global footprint in terms of fertilizers uh, being a major uh, fertilizer producing country because of caters of its oil and, 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 and coal industry. So it made this donation, which will go a long way, particularly as we approach our winter cropping season. So the, pre the bonds of friendship between President Mnangagwa and President Putin, who has just won an election, which uh, the president also we had the pleasure of congratulating our Russian uh, leader, we, we, we comrade, for our Russian uh, friend for, for, for recently winning the elections. You no, know, this is a, this will go a long way to cementing the relations between uh, Moscow and Harare. Uh, we also, the president also highlighted a donation of more than two hundred thousand dollars of two hundred thousand dollars coming from China. Uh, this donation is towards the Chitepo School of Ideology, uh, which he himself, the president, has been putting a lot of funds. The president uh, went back in memory lane when in 1963 and 64, 
He went to China as one of the pioneer recruits of the fledgling National Liberation Army, which is now, of course, which became Zipra and Zandla later and became the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. He was one of the, he was actually among the first, if not the first pioneer. And he, 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 he highlighted, he, he, he put great store in the fact that they were taught ideology before they could enter the gun. Because this became the basis of how you can mobilize and organize people to support the national liberation struggle. So the president values a lot uh, the training of ideology. So he has been putting his own funds uh, to help in the building of the new party school at Kona Heb at, at uh, Kona Samora Marshall and Fourth Street. I think that's where it is. The building is almost complete. And this donation from the Chinese will go a long way towards equipping that school with the requisite um, uh, learning material. You know, China is uh, its party school has become almost a, a, a place of pilgrimage, even by the best business people from America because they admire the way the Chinese have built a modern economy in 40 years, all stemming from the correct ideological orientation being imparted by this Communist Party school in Beijing. So the president puts great store on the young generation of Zimbabwe, learning about the historical roots of our nation as the children of Munumutapa, our great king, and he always extols, extols that aspect that we are children of the Munumutapa, the great king who, who, built, great Zimbabwe, who built great Zimbabwe and, 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 and the other citadels across the plateau. So the president puts a lot of value in the ideological training. So this donation from the Chinese Communist Party uh, received a standing uh, support from the, the Politburo. Uh, we also, uh, the president, uh, I know, was at Pupu, where we are now putting a proper perspective on the history of the first Chimurenga and the fact that our people tried their best and actually scored some significant victories during the phase of partition of Africa and colonization of Africa. And in this instance, it was Rose Pioneer Column, which suffered a bloody nose under General Ramchana. So the president, in his second, in his second republic, in the same tradition of making people understand who they are, giving them confidence in their identity, he, has, he unveiled another monument. You know, the first one of one of, of course, the prophet and inspiration of the first Shimurenga, Buyaneanda, which is now in Main Street, Harare. But this other one is actually the battle site, which previously housed the, 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 the colonial army uh, cenotaph, the one where they said we... We, 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 we lost, but now it has been put in perspective that there was actually a, a victorious general, General Mchana, and the, it is in Mat North. We are very confident that this will be enrich the history of this country, but also create a tourist site, because monuments are places where tourists go. So this is good for Mat, for Mat North. Another, uh, another tourist site has been created by President Nangagwa, with the Pupu Memorial for the heroes of the battle of Pupu against Alan Wilson, where he was annihilated uh, by the army of uh, uh, King Oro Bengula in 1893. So this matter was addressed. We also uh, came, made a, a recommendation, a resolution, that all the founders of the frontline states of our liberation struggle, you know, that is President Nyerere, President Samora Marshall, President Neto, President Kaunda, and Tserese Kama, they need to be honored at the Tanzania School of Ideology, you know, which has uh, become a very popular uh, place for us to share experiences as uh, liberation movements who fought against colonialism, settler, minority rule, apartheid and racism. So this, uh, this will also help to make young people understand the origins of our independence and to treasure it. And uh, a recommendation which came from my next uh, matter of address, which is uh, the meeting of the former friend, member, former National Liberation Movement, the FNLS. We had a, a meeting where the president sent a delegation with Zimbabwe as the host in Victoria Falls. 
led by the Secretary General Comrade Obed Mpofu. We had a meeting of the former National Liberation Movements in Victoria Falls. Zimbabwe was again hosting it for the second time. Uh, it, uh, and the decision was made that the ANC will become uh, the, the next chairman. So uh, this was one of the resolutions of that meeting. We had so much peer respect from our former National Liberation Movement's uh, uh, parties who were there. Why? Because cases of the way we became independent, where we went through an election instead of a military victory in, 17, in 1979, it has become clear that we have learned the ropes of democracy and we have reversed the perception by the West that they are the ones who own democracy. Zimbabwe's move from ballot to office instead of bullet to office created an ethos of democracy within Zimbabwe. And where we have been stalwartly fighting to defend that democracy is as much ours as it is anybody. So because we've kept ourselves close to the people of Zimbabwe, we have maintained our rule through the ballot box consistently. We always go for elections you know, we, when the time for elections is due. So being a ballot to office party, which has been tested through, through repeated assaults by the Western countries, has stilled us. We have become a, a, tried, a tried and tested party. And this is what was being valued a lot by the peer national liberation movements in Victoria Falls. Because in their various ways, these parties are also facing a, an assault on their electoral uh, processes by the Western neo-colonial colonialists. When elections come, the Western countries, they want to determine through subterfuge who becomes the rulers of these countries. And we always the aim of trying to remove the former national liberation movements from power. They want to say our ascendance to power was a fluke. They be, this region belongs to them. Uh, and they want to say we must correct this fluke by removing them because democracy belongs to the West. So here we were, all of us now, we have embraced democracy and elections as a way to rule, including Mozambique, MPLA in Angola, and Frelimo in Mozambique. We all are going for elections. But these countries, they, do, they wanted to drink from the cup of Zimbabwe because we have been on this route, on this road, longer than anybody else. And this is came out during the meeting of the frontline uh, former national liberation movements in Victoria Falls. And um, again, there's a resurgence of the spirit of the former frontline states where we are coming closer together. Even the ANC, uh, the biggest party in the region, once you now appreciates what Zimbabwe has been going through because they themselves are now being subverted left, right, and center. Divisions among them, uh, even geopolitical threats from America. The America is wanting to say to them, don't even become part of the National Liberation Movement. Don't go to the party school in Tanzania. So the ANC is beginning to, be, to, to defend itself and to identify as the party of the National Liberation Movement with the most capacity. Because obviously South Africa is a much bigger country. And we see the role which they are playing even in the DRC. They have uh, done what Zimbabwe tried to do in 1997, which we did, to defend the, the territory of the integrity of the DRC. Now the NC, the South African government, is in the DRC supporting uh, the territorial integrity and uh, advising and fo uh, forcing upon Rwanda to respect the sovereignty of the DRC. So this is very good, and this is creating even stronger bonds among ourselves and making our region strong so that we can create conditions for peace and tranquility and create conditions for democracy and co co create conditions for our people to fully enjoy the bountiful resources which make this region uh, so much uh, an object of covert, of jealousy by the Western countries. Uh, Oh, you know, in a similar vein, of course, the, uh, the president highlighted the importance of unity as a cornerstone of making sure that we never lose power. Because the purpose of the National Liberation Movements, who are democratic, is to make sure that they keep delivering prosperity to the people, which Zimbabwe is doing, and by so doing, 
making sure that at each and every vote we win power. Because the other parties which have splintered in Zimbabwe to smithereens, they don't stand for these ideals for as a people-oriented party. So all in all, we had a very, very successful uh, meeting of the Politburo with the, uh, president, with the president uh, extolling his charges to make sure that uh, we keep in touch with the people and ensuring that even in the year of drought of El Nino, nobody who is going to starve. And he gave strict directives to his Minister of Agriculture and to say and to work closely with the party to make sure that hunger never pervades our people, notwithstanding the fact that we've had a very bad cropping season this year. Uh, uh, the, 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 I think I mentioned it that all the statues of the frontline states leaders are going to be erected at the party school, which is again a symbol of the unity of the national liberation movements. So this, by and large, was the essence of our meeting today. We also discussed the trade fair. We are going to make it have a, 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 a trade fair exhibition where we will highlight the policies of the president in investment and in business and how they are going, they are attracting some of the best business people in the world. So we are going to use the full platform of the trade fair to advertise ZANU-PF as a party which is pro-business because business makes sure that the economy grows and when the economy grows, then people get jobs, young people get employed, and when there's the employed, there's shared prosperity, and when there is shared prosperity, there is a general happiness about being identified as being Zimbabweans, because things are going well. As we say now with our president, nothing succeeds like success. And you saw him recently visiting the Manise steel plant, a signature project of the Second Republic. There are many more signature projects, and we are going to highlight them during the trade fair in Blawayo so that the public, the, the visiting public, can come to terms with the many successes of President Nangagwa as a statesman, as a, a nation builder, as a regional uh, diplomat, as a geopolitical uh, figure of note who is getting respect from uh, uh, across global capitals. All in all, a feel good factor about being Zimbabwe, which is coming from the ripple effects of what the president is doing to make sure that Zimbabwe succeeds. I thank you.